welcome back to Axolotl Army. Today I will be talking to you guys about phenotypes. And it's a little more technical of a video. So basically you have genotypes or you have phenotypes. And genotypes are your genetic makeup. And then phenotypes are the observable characteristics. So today I'll be looking at the colors of your axolotl. And for all you biology nerds out there, you can really get into the phenotypes of your axolotl. I was interested with my golden albino. And she came from two golden albinos, so that makes her homozygous for the golden albino gene. So that basically means that you carry two of the same allele. So if you're heterozygous, then you have one allele from one parent and then one allele from another that could be different. So you'll wind up with a clutch that will have all different types of babies, basically. So we'll start off with your basic phenotypes. And out in the wild, you're going to find axolotls known as a wild type. So these axolotls have green, black, and brown specks, and they have, well, they can have something called iridophores. And your iridophores are the sparkly pigment in your axolotl. And they can show up all throughout the body. They can be in patches. They can look like little freckles. They can show up in the gills. Nonetheless, I feel like wild types are a really underrated phenotype. I think they're super pretty and they can either come with gold gills or this like reddish purplish brown type of gill. They'll usually have dark eyes with like a gold ring around it. Next you have a leucistic axolotl which is probably the most common type uh, for pet owners. They will either have a pink or a white body and they can actually get freckles over time and that's known as a blue gill or a dirty leucistic. They usually have black or blue eyes and they'll have really nice bright pink gills. Next we have a white albino and these guys will either have a white body or a super super light pink body and what makes them albino is that they lack all pigmentation so they will never get any freckles and their eyes are actually clear. They'll usually have bright red gills or um, pink gills depending so if you have a light colored axolotl, they are not albino unless they have the clear eyes. So speaking of albinos, uh, we move on to golden albinos, and I'm kind of biased to these ones. The golden color really is a broad spectrum. I have three golden albinos actually, and the difference between my two adults is insane. My one adult is super golden, almost like an orange tint, whereas my other one is almost completely white with some golden patches. So it really does depend on your gene pool. You always have the right to ask your breeder for pictures of the parents. Um, that way it can kind of give you an idea of what they're going to look like when they grow up. So anyways, golden albino, they have those oritophores on them. They have the clear eyes, making them albino. And their gills will be kind of peachy, pink, depending on their activity level. Then an another basic morph would be your melanoid. And these ones are different from wild types. Melanoids have an increased amount of melanophores, meaning that they're either going to be almost completely black or a grayish tint. They don't have any of the red or the green specks like a wild type would. They can't have any iridophores. If they have iridophores, then they're not a melanoid. Another pretty common phenotype would be a GFP axolotl. And GFP stands for green fluorescent protein. And this is not found in nature. It was actually produced in a lab um, scientists wanted to see if they could pass down this gene through multiple generations, and I mean, it worked. I have had two GFPs. Right now, I currently have a GFP wild type, who is gorgeous, and then I had a GFP leucistic. And the GFP leucistics will definitely glow a lot more under a black light than a GFP wild type would. Nonetheless, it makes them really pretty, but be careful because GFPs can be very sensitive to black light. I mean, think about it, it would be kind of uncomfortable if you were glowing all the time. So if you're going to do a black light, only do it once in a while. Um, they'll still have a green tint in broad daylight. It's really cool. They have the prettiest eyes. They're like this emerald green color. So it was a genetically modified protein that they put in their DNA. The purpose of putting the protein in their DNA was initially for cancer research. And then another kind of basic but kind of special morph I would say is a copper and these are probably my favorite type. Their base skin color is like a tannish color and then they have dark red or brown um, freckles all over them. They're super pretty and their gills are gonna be like a reddish brown color. They're kind of hard to find in some area and I don't even think that you can get one in Canada for whatever reason. They'll actually have red tinted eyes and 
Oddly enough, they do lay white eggs. I mean, every other axolotl lays, like, clear eggs, basically. But for some reason, coppers lay white eggs, which is kind of cool. So now we have our rare morphs. This is where your price is going to go up, and depending on where you're from, it's going to be super hard to find them. So we'll start off with a piebald. Normal axolotls, their stomachs are white, no matter what the morph is. It could be a wild type, and it'll have a white stomach. But when you have a piebald, that just means that the pigmentation can run all the way down. Heavily spotted leucistics can be mistaken for piebalds, but again, you have to watch where the pigmentation goes. Next we have um, something called a mosaic, and these guys are really cool, actually. Mosaicism is the result of two cells forming in development, and the axolotl comes out showing the phenotype of both cells. So, it'll have color variation all over its body. They're super cool looking. This can't be reproduced in breeding, so it's not something that's passed down through genetics. It's something that happens during development of the egg that causes this. Um, and many of mosaics, unfortunately, are infertile anyways. So next, we have something that's kind of taboo in the axolotl world. It's an axolotl called a chimera. I think that's how you say it. it. The reason why it's taboo is because most people will just say that it's a mosaic axolotl. But the cool thing about these guys is you'll have the two phenotypes, but it's split directly down the center. It happens in axolotls when two eggs fuse together in development and each side grows according to the egg it came from often resulting in a split down the middle appearance. The one side can often grow slower than the other, so it can have developmental issues. Chimeras cannot be duplicated in breeding. It is, again, caused by an accident during development. The chances of it even surviving past development is super small. I'm talking like below 1%, way below 1%. Finding a true chimera is extremely difficult because as your axolotl grows, what you thought was a chimera actually just turns out to be a mosaic as the pigmentation kind of drifts off to the other side. Another one of my absolute favorite phenotype is known as either a silver dalmatian or a lavender. Not much is known about these guys, but they have a more purple hue to them with uh, dark spots along the body. It almost resembles a copper with its uh, freckles, but completely different colors. They are so pretty and they have these bright red gills that are just gorgeous. I would love to have one of these one day. Another interesting phenotype that you will probably never get your hands on is known as a firefly axolotl. They're literally one of a kind. These axolotls were produced by Lloyd Stroll II from Indiana back in 2016. And he basically did this experiment where he used embryonic graphing. He was conducting a preliminary investigation into the distribution and activation of melanocytes in leucistic axolotls, and in particular, mosaics. Um, you can read more about it on Facebook, but darker axolotls were given a lighter tail, and vice versa, the lighter axolotls were given a darker tail. Literally less than a dozen of them have been produced, so extremely rare. You probably have to know the guy to even get one. But they're so cool looking. He actually took a wild type and put a GFP tail on it, hence the term firefly. They're really, really cool looking. I don't know exactly how I feel about the whole tail swapping thing, but I'm not a scientist, so I don't really know. Another thing that I wanted to put in this video was an issue that happens over in Asian countries where they actually will take oxlottles and dye their skin. And not only is it extremely painful to the axolotls, because they have such sensitive skin, it basically strips their entire slime coat. And I just find it completely unnecessary, because you have all of these amazing phenotypes that you find out in the wild.